If you have been applying for a lot of cloud security engineer job and not hearing back, this could be the reason for this. Becoming a cloud security engineer is the best career choice you can make for yourself this year. It gives you access to jobs that are over 100K, access to jobs that are remote as well, you can work from anywhere, and it's also a great pathway to becoming a senior leader in an organization someday. For context, I have been in the cybersecurity industry for 13 plus years, with the last decade or so focusing primarily on public cloud and securing assets hosted in public cloud. Now, because I have a full-time job as Chief Information Security Officer, Sir, this is also something that I look for when I hire a cloud security engineer. So this roadmap is valuable for you if you are starting today, wherever you are in your journey, all the way up to becoming a cloud security engineer. I have divided the whole roadmap into five levels so you can climb through each of the level as you progress in your learning journey. Now, before I go into level one, I just wanna let you know that no matter what level you're starting at, and as you go through them, I have the timeline at the bottom for you to switch between different levels. I want you to know that each one of these levels is achievable. I did it, so many more people have done it, so many more cloud security engineers exist today. In fact, the conversations that I've had with people from Netflix, LinkedIn, Reddit, they've all agreed. These are all achievable targets. And if you understand what level you are at and where you need to get to, this is probably the right way to go forward. And at each level, I'll explain to you in more detail on what do you need to understand specifically? Why do you need to work on that specific skill set in that level? Which brings me to the first level, level one or IT building blocks. In the IT building blocks, it's expected that when you're walking into an organization, whether it's your cloud role, engineering role, IT role, as managers who are building a cloud security team, we would expect that applicants who are coming through as cloud security engineers, they would have IT fundamentals, things like the difference between a hardware device, a software device, which is Am I using a server in this context or am I talking about an endpoint? Am I talking about a software that is installed on a machine or am I talking about a software that is on the internet like a SaaS, S-A-A-S? Now, these are just the basic foundational pieces. You also need to understand how would these communicate with each other? Like for example, if I was to build the next Facebook, I clearly cannot run it from my laptop. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> So I have to put it in a server. I have to understand that, hey, how would Ashish on the internet connect to facebook.com? That part is called networking. For example, if Mark Zuckerberg was starting today, he would have to write the software somewhere. It would be an endpoint or a laptop or a server. That's what a difference between a hardware software, understanding what virtualization is. That's what this level is all about because all this would be helping you build the foundation when you start learning the cloud. Which brings me to level two, cloud building blocks. The first step over here is to pick one cloud service provider. There are many, there are many free ones, but all the major cloud providers like Amazon Web Services, AWS, or Microsoft, Azure or Google Cloud, they all provide a one year free trial of their account for certain services. And at this level, you're primarily focusing on how do I build a cloud account? How do I manage a cloud account? How do I build identity? Like how do I give Ashish, my colleague, access to AWS or Azure or Google Cloud? Now I understand you may be thinking, hey, which one am I picking? There's so many. I would start with AWS. That was the first cloud service provider that I picked up 10 plus years ago. It is still at the time of this video, the largest cloud service provider. So if you are looking for a job, this is probably the cloud you might focus on because there's a lot more videos to learn and build projects on that are easily available on the internet. You don't have to go and pay for a course or a subscription. Now, once you have created a free trial account, you've created yourself a user, the next thing you wanna do is secure this account, which is the foundational piece of how do you even secure one AWS account? And then think about scaling, just start with one don't have to complicate it. Just start with one, how would you do cloud security in one AWS account? That brings me to why are we even doing cloud security in the first place? Why? 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 Because every organization, the most crucial or the crown jewel of the organization, no matter what organization you pick, is the data. And as security professionals, it's our responsibility to make sure that that data is kept secure. So in this level, you would also understand how would you secure data? Now that you have a cloud account, you've given access, you also have secured it. Now, if you start putting data in there, you wanna know that how are you gonna secure the data that is there? Can I encrypt it? Can I make sure that I only allow Ashish from the organization to access it? Only then you would be able to get into building an application. Once you've laid out the building blocks and you understand how data has to be secured. Now we can talk about applications. These are the example that I gave earlier, facebook.com. Now you're ready to talk about how do I put facebook.com on a server in my AWS account. Again, you can pick any cloud you want, but essentially the cloud you pick, your responsibility as a cloud security engineer would be to build 
a application in the cloud in a secure way, which is what level three building software in cloud is about. You're looking at how do I bring a application through a software development lifecycle? Like as a cloud security engineer, you would be working with developers. You would be also understanding different requirements they may have from an identity perspective. Hey, my Facebook.com can only have 10 users, not more than that. Software development lifecycle. The simplest way to put this, if you were to build the next LinkedIn.com, the essential things that you would require for this is that a, you need to understand would this application be facing the internet or would this be a private network? So you need to understand the networking context of it. The second thing would be what kind of infrastructure would you require to build the next LinkedIn.com? Is it serverless? Is it a virtual machine? Is it a laptop, an endpoint? What is it? The third level after this would be, would I require a database where I need to store all the user information that LinkedIn.com would be collecting? Now, all of these are building blocks for softwares. And as you can see, as you build from level one, level two, level three, all the knowledge from level one and level two is all coming up into level three. But this is just one LinkedIn.com website. Imagine making the LinkedIn.com available to everyone around the world. That is where level four comes in, where building patterns. This is where you have your DevOps, your infrastructure as code, your CICD understanding comes in. If you use infrastructure as code to build your infrastructure, which means that now it is a pattern. For example, if I use infrastructure as code to write a pattern to deploy and build a virtual server in cloud, once I do it, I can keep repeating it multiple times, which means that I can put this in Australia today, UK tomorrow and United States the next day. It would not matter because I have automated that. That is level four way building patterns for software building. The other name for this is also called DevOps, where you also look at CI/CD pipeline. Now that you have a pattern for infrastructure as code, you wanna be able to deploy this effectively through dev, desk, broad, which are the three different kinds of environments most organizations have. So making sure that any new code that is to be deployed is not straight away going into production, but goes into development first, then the test and then production. Now, once you reach level four, I would say you should be comfortable enough to start applying for cloud security engineer jobs. I would not recommend applying for jobs if you are at level one, two or three. If you are someone who's been applying for a lot of cloud security engineer jobs and not getting a response back, this could be the reason why. Because when you are in a job and you're expected to work as a cloud security engineer, you are expected to know those three levels of knowledge before you walk in through the door to even interview. At level five, you could be looking at how do I scale my deployments? How do I identify any threat that has happened through an incident response program? If there's an incident, how do I quickly identify? Is this a security incident? How do I respond to it? Is there an automated way for me to respond to it? Can I do security patching in an automated fashion? Can I make sure that if someone was to try and do a denial of service attack, which is basically thousands of robots or bots trying to attack one server, how do you make sure the server keeps coming back up irrespective of how many bots try and attack it. That is where backup and recovery instant response comes in. You should be able to build capability in the applications that you have built for it to be able to recover automatically from any kind of attack. And if there is an attack, you should be able to detect and respond to it. Now, as I've gone through each of these levels, a lot of questions were sprung to your mind. Don't worry, I've got you. I've got plenty of videos coming on Cloud Security Bootcamp to help you go from level two, three, four, and five onwards. If you are thinking about learning more about cloud security, I'll check out these videos over here. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment but if you have found this valuable please share this with other people who would find this helpful and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos from me i'll see you next time peace